Jake Whittington and his cat. A long time ago, there was a boy called Dick Whittington. He lived in the countryside with his mother and father. They were all very poor and often went hungry. But Dick had heard of a city called London, where everyone was so rich that the streets were paved with gold. The people were all fine ladies and gentlemen, and there was singing and dancing all day long. It sounded like a wonderful place. If only I could go to London, thought Dick. I could dig up some of that gold and bring it back here. Then we'd all be rich and no one would go hungry. One day, Dick met a coachman on the road outside the village. The coachman was eating his lunch while his horses had a rest. Where are you going? asked Dick. Well, once I finish my lunch, I'll be heading for London, said the man. London, said Dick. I'd like to go there. Isn't it very far away? Not too far, said the coachman. I'll be there by night time. Did you want to come with me? Dick shouted yes, then ran back home to grab his things. He packed a small bag with a few clothes and said goodbye to his parents. When I come back, I'll be rich and famous, just you see. I'll find my fortune in London. And with that, Dick marched off down the street. It took him a while to realise he was being followed. A big black cat was walking right behind him, just like a shadow. It was his trusty pet, Jack. What are you doing, Jack? said Dick. Do you want to come to London with me? Jack purred and rubbed against Dick's ankles. That must mean yes, thought Dick. The two of them hopped into the coach and they all set off for London. After many hours on the road, the coach finally entered London. Dick waved goodbye to the coachman and set off to explore. London was very different to the countryside. There were huge buildings everywhere, from tall warehouses to mighty cathedrals, and there wasn't a tree in sight. The people weren't all singing and dancing. They were busy rushing from one place to another. They didn't look like fine ladies and gentlemen either. In fact, many of them looked just as poor as Dick. But the biggest disappointment was the streets. They weren't paved with gold, they were covered with dirt. Dick and Jack walked for hours, searching for a street lined with gold. It's no good, said Dick. We should never have come to London. Let's just go home. He turned on his heel and started to walk out of London, when the church bells started ringing. It sounded to Dick like they were talking. Turn again, Dick Whittington, Lord Mayor of London, the bells were saying. But the bells didn't talk, and how would he ever be mayor of London? The bells rang again, and Dick heard the same words. Turn again, Dick Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. He decided to stay and see what would happen. By the next morning, Dick was very hungry. He sat on the corner of a street, asking anyone he saw for food or money. The people looked at his tattered clothes and dirty face and turned away. Get a job! said one man. You look old enough to work. I would like a job, said Dick, but what could I do? And where would I find one? The man looked at Dick, then looked at his cat. Is your cat any good at catching rats? he asked. The very best, said Dick. He's a hard worker and so am I. Then I may have something for you, said the man. Follow me. I hope you don't get seasick. The man led them down to the port and onto a big wooden ship. He explained that he was a merchant. He travelled all over the world selling beautiful things. Dick could work as a cabin boy and Jack would be the ship's rat catcher. The very next day they set sail. Dick worked all day long, scrubbing the decks and helping the cook. Jack worked hard too. Before long there wasn't a single rat or mouse left on board the ship. Everyone was very impressed with their champion rat catcher. After many weeks at sea, the boat arrived at a beautiful island. People came from far around to see the sailors and buy the merchant's beautiful wares. The merchant was invited to the palace for dinner with the king and queen. As the meal was brought out, a hundred rats rushed into the room and gobbled up all of the food. Not again, cried the king. I hate it when this happens. Does it happen very often, your majesty? asked the merchant. Oh, yes, said the king. We just don't know what to do about it. I'd give half of my treasures to be rid of those rats. 
They run around the whole island and nothing will stop them. They even run over my bed at night. I think I can help, said the merchant. I have a cat on my ship that will catch and eat every last rat on this island. Dick and his cat were sent for. Jack set to work the minute he entered the palace. It wasn't long until all of the rats had been eaten. The king and queen were amazed. Thank you, they cried, and they piled Dick with gold and treasure. The ship sailed back to England the next day. It was a smooth voyage, and they were soon back in London. Dick was now very rich. He sent home money to his parents, and he made sure Jack was always well cared for. But he spent most of his money on the poor people of London. He knew what it was like to be cold and hungry, with nowhere to go. Dick became known throughout London for his intelligence and generosity, and the people of London decided to make him their mayor. At last, the words of the bells had come true. Dick had found his fortune and become Lord Mayor of London. The end. Mm -hmm.